Hi, my name is Damon Carson. I'm the founder of a company called Repurposed Materials in Denver, Colorado. I look forward to introducing you to a new concept. We call it repurposing. Um, we're all familiar with the, the green triangle, the three-sided, the reduce, reuse, recycle. We are focused on the, the reuse side, and we call it creative reuse. And that creative reuse we call repurposing. So what are some familiar, to set the stage, what are some familiar reuses we have in America? One of them would be the used car lot. And here we're focused on reuse and sustainability. I always kind of laugh. Little did we know that the, the platted used car salesman that's been the butt of so many jokes in society is actually someone focused on sustainability because he's involved in reuse. Another fun one is the DOD, Department of Defense, the military surplus stores where you can go buy old fatigues, ammo boxes, etc. Another uh, popular reuse one is the Goodwill stores, the thrift stores. In fact, I've been a long shopper there. In fact, the blue shirt I have on today, a Gap shirt, is from a, is from a thrift store. So these are familiar reuses. Um, what is our twist then? And again, I've already said it, repurposing. For our, our definition, reusing by repurposing byproducts and waste of industry. Um, what we say is repurpose repurposing used assets, often hard to recycle items that have value as is, and again, as is to a second unrelated industry. And I think it's very important to note that we are not recycling. Again, the, the triangle I already said, we're focused on the reuse side. All the buzz for 20, 30 years has been about recycling, but in recycling you have to, you have to melt it, you have to mold it, you have to chip it, you have to grind it, you have to transform it to give it a second life. In repurposing and reusing, um, again, we're looking for assets that have value as is. So to start thinking about that, what are some familiar repurposes already going on in America? Again, plastic barrels is, is a good one. How do you reuse, or in our case, repurpose a plastic barrel? You might cut the tops off, you store stuff in it. You might cut a little hatch out of it. It becomes a compost bin. You might, again, take that same 55-gallon drum and put some stuff in it, becomes a rain barrel. Uh, whiskey barrels, wine barrels, again, probably starting to get a flavor for it. You cut it in half, it becomes a planter. Oftentimes used in furniture making, etc. Uh, another one, railroad ties. This has been around for decades. Again, the railroads, the Union Pacifics, the Santa Fe's take up all these old railroad ties. They get a second life as landscaping timbers. So these are Familiar repurposes, now that I've pop populated the screen with these, oh yeah, I've seen that, you know, again, repurposing. So what are some less familiar repurposes? The old advertising billboards that sit along the interstate that say McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Budweiser, Chevrolet, etc. Again, they become no good because in this case a McDonald's one, the 99 cent hamburger promotion is no longer good, so the sign comes down, gets folded, and put away. Again, no longer of value to the advertising industry, but doesn't mean that that piece of material isn't still waterproof, UV protected. In this case, it could get used as a tarp to cover building materials, hay, etc. Another one, conveyor belt. Miles and miles and miles of conveyor belt each year are, are uh, changed out in gold mines, copper mines, sand pits, etc. Again, no longer good is to convey material, but it can get a second life in this case as, uh, as, some, as a, what they call a lawn protection mat. When your uh, construction company is doing work on a lawn, they can put it down. They get used as flooring. Uh, cattlemen like them to build windbreaks. Again, it's getting a, a second life in an unrelated industry. But again, it has value as is. Now, before I pop up the third slide, I want you to imagine um, a street sweeper brush that we're all familiar, city of Chicago, LA, Seattle, you name it, they all use them. They stand about uh, five feet tall when they're new. They're about 36 inches around and the, the bristles slowly grind down as they whisk against the pavement and when they're done they're about 24 inches wide. Again, almost in all cases they're just simply discarded, they're landfilled. But again, we have found a repurpose, a second unrelated industry that can use those. So I'm pausing here for a minute. Got your mind going? Any ideas on how a street sweeper could, brush could get repurposed? Well, actually there's an underground economy for these things as back scratchers for livestock. Again, originally manufactured as a street sweeper brush, the engineering and everything, but there's a second unrelated industry that can reuse those and that's 
again, is back scratchers for livestock. Interestingly, I had a golf course superintendent approach us just not long ago, and he said, man, those would be awesome, those street sweeper brushes, to pull behind uh, the lawn tractors on a golf course to work the sand into the fairways and into the green. So potentially there's a yet another repurpose of a street sweeper brush. So when you repurpose, you get some highly engineered products that either are surprisingly and uniquely designed or, as we like to say, sometimes are over-engineered for their second life. So here's an example. The big 12-foot mining tires. They weigh about 6-7 tons. Again, highly engineered. They're, they're made to be tough, uh, to hold up to the, the tons and tons of coal or aggregate or whatever they're hauling. They get a second life. Again, kind of the game show theme still going here. Anybody know how a 12-foot mining tire could get a second life? They get a second life cut in half as a stock tank for livestock. And again, the, the wise guy in the audience was always going to say, well, you know, it's still got a hole in the bottom. How does it hold water? Well, it takes a little bit of extra effort to reuse these, but a, a farmer or a rancher will just fill that bottom with cement, and you get a, a 50, 60-year uh, stock tank. And again, how is that highly engineered? Well, again, I don't know what your knowledge of the ag industry is and, and cattle specifically, but a lot of times around stock tanks they'll get to nudging around, get to playing and get to fighting and they'll start kicking the tanks. Sometimes they'll actually jump in the tanks. Again, you got a steel galvanized tank, it gets dented. A, a deer hunter will come along and decide to take target practice and all of a sudden they'll plunk a little hole in there and just starts draining the tank. Again, these Goodyears, the Michelins, so highly engineered is this stuff that it's so tough that it gets a great second life for a 40, 50 year stock tank. An interesting little side note about the stock tank, not to belabor the point, but that rubber actually will absorb heat during the coldest of nights if there's sun out. And that heat will slowly re release all night long. And so an interesting kind of, in this reuse application, they will actually keep the stock tanks from freezing or it's just a really, really thin coat of ice so the cattle in the morning when they come to drink can just punch through instead of having to wait for the farmer to come out and sledgehammer the ice out. Again, a lot of the properties that make them really unique and interesting to the mining industry also make them good for repurposing for that second industry. What makes a, a byproduct a candidate for repurposing? How can we train ourselves to think you know, is this a candidate for repurposing? I come up with the acronym, the acronym SAVE IT, S-A-V-E. Uh, the S stands for standardization. Is each unit the same size, color, texture? Often I'm asked, if, if you would call me and say, hey Damon, I've got 100 2x4s. They range in, from 23 inches to 107 inches. That's not nearly as interesting for remarketing purposes as if you call and say, hey Damon, I've got 100 2x4s and they're all 42 inches. Again, standardization just makes it standardization in color, stand, standardization in the material, whatever. If they're standardized, they become a good candidate for repurposing. The A, availability. Is it a recurring waste stream? Again, you call me and say, hey Damon, I have this widget and I have 300 of them, but when those 300 are gone, I'll never get them again. That's not nearly as interesting to say, hey, I produce 50 of these a month and we're going to keep producing them. In the case of the billboards, um, it could be not only your waste stream, but the industry's waste stream. You know, I may be getting the billboards from Atlanta, Georgia, and, you know, they might produce 30 a month. But once we know about that waste stream, then we can start circulating to the other, to the other ones in the industry and still start getting billboards from Kansas City, from Phoenix. Again, how large and how available is that waste stream? V, versatile. Can it get reused several different ways? Again, you call me. Hey, Damon, I've got a hundred flush toilets. Well, in my mind, and maybe I'm not thinking far enough outside the box, but a flush toilet is always going to be a flush toilet. Uh, you know, I guess you could repurpose it as a, as a dog water bowl, but in my way of thinking, a a flush toilet's always going to be a flush toilet. But think about some of the ones like conveyor belt. We've already showed that. It can be used as a windbreak. can be used as flooring for garages, for stock trailers. Um, all kinds of different things you can use rubber for. Again, billboard vinyls. Very generic. A lot of different applications. The more versatile it is, 
the more chances to repurpose it. And the E stands for engineering. What are its ingredients, characteristics, properties? Again, is it, is it waterproof? Does it have UB? Is there a certain kind of steel that maybe it's high tensile strength? Again, all these interesting qualities for the, re the reason it was originally manufactured may also give it a second life in that, again, unrelated industry. So there you have it. Save it. S-A-V-E. Repurposing can actually be a key strategy for three growing organizational priorities. The most obvious one, number one, landfill diversion and or saving landfill tipping fees. What, in the case of the street sweeper brushes, it's just been something cities, whether it's Philadelphia, Miami, they've just been thrown over the way. But if you can find that, that second purpose for it in an unrelated industry, you can keep it and save the money. The second one, extended per producer responsibility, product stewardship. It's kind of a new term in the last few years about a manufacturer making something so when it's used up in its for its original intended purpose. And again, I think a street sweeper would be brush would be a great example. You know, extended producer responsibility as well. When the street sweeper brush is used up, it's going in the trash. There's starting to be more and more onus on that manufacturer to be a steward of that product and again repurposing may be a strategy to keep it out of the landfill and give it a longer life. The third uh, organizational priority would be investment or asset recovery. Again, right now it might be thrown away. If we build through repurposing sufficient demand, what's just going in the trash now and is, is worth zero dollars, we may be able to start actually paying you for at some point in the future because there's a duff demand. So again, Three organizational priorities that repurposing becomes a, a avenue to look at enhancing. Um, this was kind of a fun one. I, as we all know, recycling and I've already delineated the difference. There is a very mature industry with papers, plastics, been around a lot of big players. I was just at a recycle conference not long ago, and the guest speaker said e-waste, the recycling of cell phones, of um, computers and stuff is kind of in the wild wild west stage you know it's four five six years old and still trying to shake out and I have to admit as I was thinking about repurposing in the back of my mind I just got really excited because if, if e-waste is in the wild wild west stage then repurposing is a new frontier I mean we're just in St. Louis right now just starting to head up the Missouri River and it just I think this is something that's new and coming um, in the whole sustainability movement is repurposing. Um, repurposing is starting to get national media attention. We've already been lucky enough in, in these three slides. Here's we are just promoting our, our billboard tart to some specific audiences, but you can see it just resonates with people. Um, just a few weeks ago, a French television station was had picked up our story. They sent a crew. It's actually. Um, they found it interesting enough that they wanted to come, and they did, doing a story on us. It's going to get translated into six languages and sent around the world. Um, because, again, just kind of a different, unique, and new take on the whole sustainability thing, and specifically the reuse side of the triangle. Uh, repurposed products are a great way to uh, comply with environmentally preferred purchasing type mandates and initiatives, which are just kind of starting in governments, but no doubt will spread more and more to, to corporate America. So what's an example? Say you're a park and rec district and you need, and you just routinely buy tarps every year to cover baseball fields, to cover sand before um, you use it as fill on the golf course or whatever. Obviously you could go buy new tarps, but if you think and develop a repurposing mindset, you could buy a billboard vinyl and again use that those budget numbers and uh, use it on something you would otherwise pay for. Example, a construction company. Again, with an environmentally preferred purchasing mandate, they again, we've already talked about them, the lawn mats. They might have to buy those to do a, a swimming pool or some landscaping. And again, if you think repurposing, you could buy a roll of conveyor belting that meets the needs. Again, you, you've got to think that Gosh, if that piece of conveyor belting can handle tons and tons of aggregate over 24 hours, seven days a week, you know, you can probably run a bobcat over it and it, it not hurt the environment underneath. So again, just a couple of ideas on how you can uh, spend your environmentally preferred purchasing dollars um, and then again be able to use those in other places. 
Um, this is kind of a fun thing, just a little bit about our company. Um, our company, as we like to say, does not have a research and development division. Rather, our R&D department, as we call it, is our 15,000, and it's quickly approaching 20,000, and we'll probably no doubt exceed that in just a few short weeks, people who receive our newsletter. Um, here's an example. So we get a byproduct, we learn about it, it, it works through that, that save it grid, but yet we still don't know what industry could use that. So we will put it out, and of these 20-some thousand people on our newsletter, there's you know, people from the bowling alley industry, people from the chicken farming industry, forestry people, oil people, just all kinds of different industries. So we'll just put it out, as you can see with this jet hose. You know, it can handle 2,500 PSI. It's one inch in diameter. And then emails will start slowly trickling back on, hey, we could use that in our industry, or hey, send us a sample. And all of a sudden, you know, we could stay up till 3 in the morning trying to figure out a re what a repurpose is, but rather... We put it out to our, as we said, our R&D department, and they come up with some cool ideas. So again, something to keep in mind. We'd always love to be a resource on any byproduct you may have. Um, so again, if they meet the Save It criteria, uh, send me several pictures. Um, send me a description, any technical data. And again, we'll create a slide. We send out that newsletter once a week. Um, you may, we may be able to help you find a, a repurpose for whatever byproduct it is that you're having having a tough time diverting from the landfill. So in conclusion, a question we frequently get asked, does repurposing make more sense economically or environmentally? Um, we like to think it makes sense both ways. It makes a lot of sense economically. It's saving ind other industries. A lot of times we can save industries 50, 60, 70 percent over buying new because again we're taking it out of a different industry and of course obviously it makes sense environmentally because we're keeping it out of the landfill. Um, again, my name is Damon Carson, Repurpose Materials. We'd love to uh, become a resource for you, however that may be. So give us a call, our website, phone, however. But we appreciate the few minutes to introduce the concept of repurposing.